What's up guys, Jordan here with part two of Objective C Tutorials, Object Oriented Programming. Now the first lesson of Object Oriented Programming is lesson 14, Intro to Classes. Now what we will begin to cover in this lesson and the next few lessons is obviously classes and objects and programs based on the above mentioned instead of global data and structures and the basic ideas about encapsulation and encapsulation is one of the three main bullet points of object oriented programming and the advantages of using objects. Now what's the difference? Well, a problem with structures and global data is when you want to change the structure, you have to go and find all the functions that use this structure and change them as well. Now object oriented programming solves this problem with encapsulation and we'll actually be going over encapsulation in the next lesson in lesson 15. But object-oriented programs are built around objects. And you're probably saying, well, duh, I mean, given the name. But you may be saying, well, what is an object? Well, an object packages together data with the particular operations that can use or affect that data. And we'll also be talking about objects mainly in lesson 15 and mainly just uh, classes in this lesson. So what is a class? Well, it looks like the following. And all that code you see there is the class definition. And you can ignore the at interface, and the budget is the name of the class. And then you can ignore the NS object and at end. But look where it says float exchange rate. Those are the instance variables. And they probably look very familiar because they're actually just the members from the structure in the last lesson. And then down there below, where it says methods, those are actually just the function prototypes from the last lesson as well. So we've moved the structures and the function prototypes into a class called budget. So we move the data and the operations into one class. Now a class definition is like a data structure definition because it defines the data elements, which are called the instance variables. But a class definition is different from a data structure because it also defines behavior, which are the methods. And instance variables are often called IBARs. And they are the data elements of a class instead of members. So instead of members like of a data structure, you have IBARs of a class. And methods, they used to be called functions in procedural programming. And they implement the behavior of the class. So data, IVARs, behavior, methods. Now you may be saying, well, is it called a method or a function? Because I had someone ask me this question in the comments of, I think, uh, the lesson about functions. But they were like, um, shouldn't you have been calling these methods instead of functions? Well, I actually gave them an incorrect answer at the time. But I was right to call it functions in that lesson because it's the behavior and procedural programming. But you call it methods when it's any behavior in object-oriented programming. So it's functions in procedural and methods in object-oriented programming. So I hope that clarifies you, clarifies it for anyone who is wondering. Now, don't go to Xcode because we actually haven't learned enough to code anything. We've just been going over the very basics of classes. In lesson 15, we'll just be going over the very basics of objects, so we won't be coding anything in lesson 15 also. But lesson 16, we should be able to get into Xcode and start coding an object-oriented program. But a lot of fun stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Please subscribe so you can get be notified whenever I upload a new Objective Seed tutorial. And check out any lessons you may have missed. Please like this video, comment below, and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.